beloved in Christ. You are welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to kindly subscribe to this channel. And also, I want you to click on the like button for me. So, I want you to kindly tell us where you're watching us from in the live chat or the comment section below. Also, you got any testimony for us? Kindly let us know through the live chat or the comment section because we will be blessed by it. Also, share abroad to bless others because this message you are about listening is going to bless your spirit, it's going to bless your soul, it's going to bless your body too. And so, subscribe, like, and share for me. Thank you. Say. Glory say and the leaf to wrap up my hair. My glory say and the leaf to glory say Oh my glory say and the leaf to my glory I'm the lifter. Oh, you are my glory. Say, I'm the lifter. For thou, O Lord, are the shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. For thou, O Lord, for thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. Shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord, for always affording us and allowing us the privilege of fellowship. Thank you even for further extending that privilege to a corporate gathering. Your presence graciously, graciously floods us. Your light illuminates us, and your power evidently is put on the scene for addressing the afflictions of humankind. We bless you even for tonight. We thank you because you are going to be opening our understanding and you'll be energizing us by the anointing of the Spirit to take spiritual responsibilities that is required even for the fortunes of your agenda on the face of the earth as much as we are allowed to participate in. Take all the glory, take all the honor in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. How are you all doing? Glory, 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 glory to God. It's such a delight to be here again this evening to share. I want to welcome everybody leaders that are here this evening and everyone here for all this fellowship and um, of course I want to appreciate all the online audience who are here and following online um, we are currently having to meet in a studio and transmit from a studio because of um, the times that we are in um, what God has asked us to do, the strategy he's given to us is such that most of our engagements are in the evenings and sometimes it moves into the night and um, given the times that we are in, it's not wisdom to expose people to, you know, late night movements since the demographic cut across the old and the young. And so we decided for this period, even for the next two weeks, to have our meetings from the studio where we beam to our audience and of course 
our people who would also be connecting via the platforms. Um, the gospel cannot be tamed. It must be communicated even as the agenda of God is advanced on the face of the earth. But we believe that um, in no distant time we'll restore and resume to our normal operations in a more glorious way. Uh, so tonight I'll be sharing with us for just one hour and um, because of the times and because of the operations in our country, Nigeria, for this period, I'm going to be having periodic broadcasts um, just to acquaint us with the necessary wisdom, strategy and empowerment to go through this season even as we trust the Lord for the emancipation that we are about to enjoy as a people in Nigeria and I want to crave your indulgence those of us following from different nations to pray for and with Nigeria and Nigerians at this time it's a sensitive season the nation has been plundered uh, the level of uh, wickedness the level of evil the level of darkness decadence and waste um, is at an unprecedented high in fact we've not had it like this before and so we are at a brink of a transition and we trust the Lord that his purposes will find expression even in Nigeria. And so um, for this week, um, because of the nature of what's happening in the country, I'm going to be doing a teaching majorly centered on prayer um, because of the role prayer plays in the advancement of God's kingdom. And we are going to be having periodic times of prayers um, just to bring in our own little quota to what the corporate body of Christ is doing to ensure that the will of God finds expression in our day and time. Um, you know, and, and I'm going to be sharing even this evening and touching a few things, but because it's going to be more of a series, I, I wouldn't be delving too deep in order to help carry us through and um, get everybody up to speed. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. And so tonight I'm going to be starting this series on the doctrine of prayer and um, I'll do the introduction today uh, and then trust God to have four more episodes before the elections. And I believe this teaching will help us to pray more purposefully and to pray more effectively because it's one thing to pray but it's another thing to pray effectively. It's not just prayer that produces results but it's effective prayer that produces result. And so for tonight, which happens to be the introduction to the doctrine of prayer, I'm going to be doing or looking at the purpose of prayer. And I have seven of them here that I'll be touching. Uh, the purpose of prayer. And so when you pray, these things will inform why you pray and help to recalibrate your focus in the place of prayer. Um, the Bible said in Isaiah 66 from verse 8, said as soon as I travailed, she brought forth her children. And so when we pray, prayer is not without a purpose. Um, when we pray, our prayer must produce a result, a result that is beneficial to God's agenda on the face of the earth, a result that is beneficial to us as individuals and citizens of, of the kingdom, and a result that will leave a legacy and a dynasty for God even on the face of the earth, which becomes the basis, of course, for the worship and memory of God for the preceding generations. And so prayer is not without a purpose. And so we are going to be looking at that this evening, trusting the Lord to give us understanding and also recalibrate us, even as we'll be praying more effectively towards the election and towards a most profitable existence. It's important to note that um, God has not left us without a witness. Jesus speaking and he said, um, there are many things I have to tell you. He said, but you cannot receive it. He said, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, it will guide you into all realities. And Bible scriptures reveal to us that the spirit of truth, Jesus calls him the comforter. He is our help, he's our advocate, he's our guide. He's everything God has packaged in order to bring us into that place of advantage. And so God wants us to live a life of advantage. He said, before... Um, you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, I ordained you. So we are ordained for a purpose. And for us to live that purposeful life, there are systems of advantage that we must explore. 
in order for that to become a reality. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he said, they are thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. And so for us to have that hope and future, we must understand very vividly and very accurately the systems of advantage that the Lord has put in place for us. And so um, I'm going to be outlining a few of them here for us tonight. And then just to let us know that prayer is one of that system of advantage, even before we begin to exploit. When you begin to study the scripture, um, you find out there are different components of the systems of advantage that we have. We have weapons in the spirit. We have strategies in the spirit. We have structures in the spirit. All of these things are systems of advantage. For example, let me look at a few weapons that we have as believers with which we war. There are about four major weapons we have in order to war in the kingdom. The first is the word. The word of God is not just God's way of communicating to us in order to gain acquaintance into the ways of God. The word, the word of God is a weapon in the spirit. The Bible said that we should take up the word which is the sword of the spirit in Ephesians chapter 6. So the word is a weapon. And so if you understand the word of God, it becomes a system of advantage for you in the spirit in the category of weapons. Um, also, prayer is a weapon in the spirit. When we pray, we are not just talking to God and hearing God. There is a realm in prayer where prayer becomes a weapon. This is why the Bible said, when you are confronted with the mountain, it didn't say to talk to God. It says to use that weapon. In Mark chapter 11, the Bible said from verse 22, it said, have this kind of faith. It said, if there's a mountain before you, it said, you should address that mountain specifically and you should tell that mountain to be removed and to be cast hence. And it said, if you do not doubt, you will have what you say. And so your prayer becomes a weapon and therefore is a system of advantage in the spirit. And then you also see that faith is a system of advantage. It's a weapon in the spirit. It's the above all, taking up the shield of faith, where which you are able to stand all the vice and the darts of the enemy. And so a man who does not have faith is exposed and defenseless in the spirit. And so when you build your faith, it's not just because you are a Christian. When you build your faith, it's not just because um, faith is part of our Christian life. It's a weapon. You cannot fight except as you are sufficiently vested with faith. And so there are many weapons like this as you begin to study scripture. The word of God is there. The, your faith is there. Prayer is there. And so when you finish dealing with the weapons you use to fight, because these are the ones you literally use to engage warfare, there are also other strategies, which is also a system of advantage. Because it's not just having a weapon, but there is a how to use that weapon. And so strategies are also a system of advantage in the kingdom. And so you have weapons and then you have strategies. If you look at the scriptures and you are a Bible student, you are going to discover there are a few strategies the Lord has put in place for us. Number one is wisdom. Most times the Holy Ghost comes to give us direction because this strategic direction the Holy Ghost gives to us makes us invincible. The Bible said the labor of the foolish wearies every one of them why he said they know not how to enter the city and so a man who doesn't know how even if he has the right weapons he will still lose and so in the systems of advantage you have weapons and then you have strategies and so every time the holy ghost speaks to us it's not just for intimacy purpose when the holy ghost speaks to us is to give us strategic direction that becomes an advantage to us this is why the bible says wisdom is a defense because it's a strategy of preservation and it's also a strategy that gives you advantage as you walk through life when you study the scripture another strategy the lord gives to us is love these things are not the things the world know the world is selfish the world is wicked but for we who are in the kingdom when we use what is available to us we are not just mirroring the nature of god but they become strategies and systems of invincibility and so why the world uses self uses wickedness to to go by we are mandated because of the nature of love that we have now to walk in love in order to live a victorious life so love is a strategy of advantage the bible speaking it said do not repay evil for evil he said when you show love to your enemies you heap coals of fire upon them now this is not what the world understands but for we who are believers 
this is how we live our lives and why we are doing it to men it is foolishness but the advantage that we record eventually confounds the wisdom of this world and so love is a strategy of and it's also a system of advantage and then you have prophecy most times when you see that in the world system people depend on human connection depend on so many things to go by but for we Christians before we step out we either secure a word from the Lord or we speak for that word so the words we speak becomes the way we follow these are strategies the people of the world don't know it the Bible said they cannot even know it in 1st Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 14 he said the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit and he said neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned he cannot receive them because they are foolishness to him he said they ca he cannot know them because they are spiritually discerned now why am i sharing these things because we are going to need these things especially in this season if you don't have faith you have to sit with the word of god to build faith because when you are in a situation where natural things can't help you you will need something quickened in your spirit in order to come out of that situation if you are going about your daily life you need to know how to secure it in the place of prayer before going out you need the word of god as you navigate through life because of the treachery and the wickedness of our world today and then you also need these strategies in order to go by in life you need the wisdom of the holy spirit which is deeper than what you read in the book sometimes you wake up in the morning you want to go out and the holy ghost says stop and the holy ghost asks you to stay at home after two hours it tells you to go and then you discover there was a, a riot somewhere if you left when you wanted to leave you would have been caught up in that riot and that would have that that can just be the difference between life and death so so we need this kind of wisdom that comes from the speakings of the holy spirit and then we need this kind of well you know strategies that comes from the place of love because you can't walk in bitterness you can't walk in selfishness in a world and in a time like this because if you walk according to the dictates of God, then the provisions of the kingdom are made available to you. And you can't just stand up and start strolling out and say, I want to go to the market. You need to fortify your day with prophecy. As you go to sleep, you need to fortify your night with prophecy. This is the hour we are living in. Because anything can just happen. People die of stray bullets. It was not planned for them. It was not occasion for them. But there is no war of fortification around them. And so a bullet can just stray. And that bullet finds its way to somebody. What if there was a prophecy that already captured that you will live for 80 years? What if there was a prophecy that you shall not die but live to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? What if there was a prophecy that a thousand shall fall by your side, ten thousand by your right hand, it shall not come near you with your eyes, you shall see and behold the recompense of the wicked? That prophecy would have renavigated that bullet. And so one of the strategies we need to you know, subscribe to in this time is a strategy of prophecy. And so when you wake up, you pray until your spirit is charged and a word goes forth. That word becomes your insurance for the season. You can't just afford to step out. People can be shot in, in the mall. People can be shot in a in public space. People can just be going home and they'll be kidnapped. I listened to somebody speaking the other day and he said they were driving home and kidnappers just came to the road randomly. They didn't have any information about them. It was just a periodic attack and they were caught up. And so this is not a time to just live carelessly. And so you need strategies. And one of the strategies you must have is prophecy. And then finally, you need prayer. Because prayer is also a strategy. Prayer is not just a weapon. Prayer is also a strategy. In fact, all of the systems of advantage in this kingdom, when you x-ray them, from weapons to strategies to structure, you will find prayer in all of them. Prayer is the one thing that is inclusive in every dimension of the christian operation you can never exonerate remove prayer from anything that has to do with the kingdom because this is what vitally fuses you to heaven and gets you to receive feedbacks from heaven and so prayer is very important in this season in that it's a weapon and it's also a strategy tonight i just want to share with us very briefly on the seven major purpose or purposes of prayer so that as you pray this thing to become your major emphasis are we together can you imagine i wanted mentioning the blood of jesus as a weapon but it's fine i know you know that already praise god that's not my emphasis i'm just using that as a foundation 
and as a basis to show us the significance of prayer are the people online following hope the audio is very clear um, we are in the studio so um, we, we will try to manage and contain intensity until there is it's time to pray and then we, we can pray hallelujah praise the Lord so prayer has definite purposes and if you pray and you don't realize these purposes then that prayer exercise is not very profitable praise God and so this evening because we are going to be looking at the doctrine of prayer and deal with the subject extensively let me begin by outlining this this um, purposes so any dimension we of prayer we look into you will trace it back and understand this is why we are looking at those dimensions praise God the first purpose of prayer I'll be outlining to us here is the fact that prayer is designed to exercise our human spirit anybody living without exercise will either have morphological or structural deformation especially as he grows older or the organs will never function as they are at their optimum level exercise is a vital component of human beings and our human engagement they optimize our organs they energize our systems and they bring us to a place of absolute comfort where we enjoy our lives and also live our lives to the full if you find a man who is not vitally exercising not too long he will start having feedbacks from his organs very vital organs in fact biologically speaking if you don't exercise for a while you are at the risk of suffering things like high blood pressure and hypertension because as fatty acid begins to grow in your bloodstreams they begin to increase the, the pressure of blood flow you are at the risk of having lung infections heart infections even your muscles a lot of things go wrong with it you know your brain cannot function at optimal level because oxygen supply to the brain will be limited in fact a lot of contradictions can happen every man who wants to live in the flesh optimizing this life must engage in exercise one way or the other it can be mild it can be intense if you're an athlete of course it has to be intense in order to prepare you mentally and physically for that level of rapid engagement but if you are not an athlete you may not need that level of intense exercise but by all means your body must be exercised in order for your body to function at optimum level same applies to our spirits the reason you find people who cannot pick signals from the realm of God the reason you find people become victimized the reason you find people going through life as though God does not exist is because everything credited into their spirit they are not utilizing they are not maximizing you find a man physically exercising after a while there's a change in his muscles apart from the fact that his strength level increases oxygen level oxygen supply in the body increases flow of blood increases even the physical muscles shows that something is happening to this man same applies in the spirit many Christians are weak because their spirits are not exercised if your spirit is exercised the wealth that is in your spirit will begin to find expression in your life improving the quality of your life can I shock you the greatest wealth on earth is not in the bank the greatest wealth in the earth is not in the soil the greatest wealth in the earth is in the human spirit Paul speaking in Colossians 1 26 he said Christ in you is the hope of glory and so the Godhead the totality of the Godhead is currently living in every one of us and so the power of God is there the faith of God is there the anointing of God is there everything of God is already in your spirit but how much of it you can draw out is a function of how active your spirit man is in fact the Bible speaking in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 he said with joy shall ye draw out waters out of the wells of salvation Jesus speaking in John chapter 7 verse 38 and 39 he said they that believe out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living waters there is too much in our spirits already see as we are now if our spirit is is tapped if our spirit is sufficiently utilized we will live on earth literally as gods the reason the quality of our lives keep diminishing and depleting is because we are not maximizing the potential of our spirit and so when god gave us the the the, the instrument of prayer it was a strategy 
to exercise our spirit and to bring all of the glories and the wealth that he has planted in our spirit. And so Paul speaking in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8, hear what Paul said. He said bodily exercise. Now, he didn't despise or undermine the place of bodily exercise. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Let's read that quickly since it's a Bible study. Can we have that quickly on, on the screen? 1 Timothy 4 8. Who is on the, on the screen? You have to be very fast. He said bodily exercise profited little. This is Paul now trying to give you a comparison between what you can gain from physical exercise vis-a-vis -vis spiritual exercise. Do you know what people gain from physical exercise? Apart from the health benefits, physical exercise also has the potential of changing your fortune. It's exercise that Cristiano Ronaldo is exercising and making millions of dollars every day. And Paul comparing physical exercise to spiritual exercise caused all of that little. I've seen men who because of aggressive exercise live to very old age and they are still sound. If you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger today, everywhere gray but very agile, very solid. Why? Because of physical exercise. There are men who because of physical exercise for 40 years they've not been sick. This is not anointing. This is not somebody laid hands on me. This is not I'm using faith. This is I have trained my body. My body is so strong that diseases are no longer compatible to my body. There are men who have exercised their bodies that biologically now, when you start exercising, the volume of oxygen pumped from the lungs increases. So your heart rate, your heartbeat does not need to. You don't need to breathe like a sick person. If you breathe, 50% of the time, the person who doesn't exercise breathe. The volume of oxygen your body will have will be more than that person. So if I'm exercising and he's not exercising, he may need to breathe 30 times to be able to generate the same oxygen I will, I will produce breathing 15 times. So naturally, I'll be, a, I'll be doubly, doubly more effective than him because of the oxygen. Your brain functions based on oxygen. If you don't have oxygen in your brain for 15 seconds, I was told you die. That is the level of dependence on the brain of oxygen. Your phone may have the capacity of connecting to the internet, downloading beautiful content for you to see. You know your phone has the capacity of communicating to anybody around the world if there is airtime, of course. Are we together? If the battery of that phone dies, all the functionality dies. If you don't have airtime, you may be limited from making calls. If you don't have data, you may be limited from connecting to the internet. But if you don't have charge, every function dies. This is why a Christian who is not exercised is completely ineffective. Because this kind of exercise is what brings you into all-round sufficiency. You tell them to serve, they can't serve. You tell them God is speaking, they can't hear. Even when God shows up blessing people, they can't receive. Because receiving in the kingdom is not give me. Receiving in the kingdom is to take. So it takes a measure of spiritual energy to even take. That's why most people who are sick, they are sitting, but they can't take the healing. The word is katalambano. If you don't have energy in your spirit, you may not even be able to take, even if it's available. Did you not read the story of the man at the pool of Bethesda? He said for 38 years he was there. When the water is stirred, before he enters, somebody else enters. And so a man is sitting before his blessings but for 38 years he couldn't enter because even spiritual things require a measure of energy to take so when you don't exercise your spirit the blessing will pass you won't catch it the goodness of the lord will pass you won't catch it even when god visits you may not be able to receive because the spirit is flat what can you do to a phone that is dead calls can't work text messages can't work connecting to internet can't work that's how some christians are why because the spirit is not charged they are not building up they are not building up so faith is in their spirit but faith is dead wisdom is in their spirit but wisdom is dead even jesus in their spirit is asleep because jesus sleeps in a boat they don't have enough energy to say master 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 care it not down that we perish this is how significant prayer is. See, when Christians go through things, don't begin by pitying them. Help them to come out of it. Teach them what they need to know. Because pity may just keep somebody crippled for a lifetime. No energy. 
and so cycles of ordinations keep passing they never leap in what god told them he would do in their lives would have begun at the age of 19 now they are 45 they've not started because there's no energy in the spirit and then when they grow old they start regretting until they die when god gave us prayer is for building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost and can i shock you the devil doesn't attack everybody he looks for those who are weak because he doesn't have enough weapon to waste that's why the bible speaking in proverbs 24 10 he says, if you faint in the day of trouble it means your strength is little if the devil come to you once and again and discovers everything that is meant to destroy you translate to testimony and you are showing the world that is weak he will leave you for a season did you not read about jesus he said and satan left him for a season because if i continue hitting on this man this testimony can encourage 10 other people who had given up imagine if the devil gave you cancer god forbid you, you can't have it in the first place imagine if cancer shows up and then you aggressively you scatter that thing and it dematerializes and then you come and testify five other persons who have already given up on cancer we know that cancer doesn't kill after all and so that attack the devil attacked you will become liberty for five people and then it doesn't stop here the devil now came again tried accident and then you showed up you maneuvered you left you came and testified somebody else who is in an accident scene will now know that there's a possibility of escape then the devil came kidnapped you again you went there you came out you still came and testified the devil will now know that if he continues to attack you your testimony will create a pathway for many deliverances he will leave you for a season but for you to become invincible like that your spirit must be charged all the time and so the reason we pray one of the many reasons we pray is to always keep our spirit charged there are men that their spirits are so charged that any signal that passes they catch it there are men whom spirits are so charged that if the devil plays around them he's in trouble you find so, so, somebody he's going on the road and the devil attacks his car to have an accident and then he said father because this thing has happened here nobody will have accident here for 10 years so it's not everybody the devil tries the devil strikes somebody with poverty he breaks out of it and he said anybody who is poor that comes across me must be wealthy and on his account two million people are already wealthy because the spirit is charged if your spirit is not charged you are defeated and so prayer is not a religious activity it's our means of plugging our spiritual battery to power to charge up so that we can live life to the optimum what you are doing now is good but if god shows you what you should be doing you may be disappointed and so for you to function how god expects you to function is from a level of a charged spirit you may be praying for deaf ears they are opening and god is saying now you should be raising the dead you may be operating at the level of you have a million naira, you have three million, you can give hundred thousand, you can give five hundred thousand, and God is saying the level where you are now, you should be giving ten thousand dollars, you should be giving a hundred thousand dollars, but we are happy that now you have ten million. So don't be quick to celebrate your success. Praise God for it, but find out where you should be in God's calendar. Did you not read about Joshua? After conquering 31 kings, God said, Ah, uh -uh, you have not started though. He said, They see the city, the land is vast. I expected you to take the whole city. Meanwhile, at old age, Joshua conquered 31 kingdoms. God wanted him to conquer the whole lands that Israel was supposed to take. If you read the story of Joshua, the exploit was enormous. But God had more for Joshua. And so, if there is an opportunity to charge your spirit, keep charging it. There is just another level you are yet to enter. One thing that inspires me to pray is when I watch those at the gym. You come, they put the weight for you. You struggle barely to lift that weight. And they are telling you you are doing well. And then you lift once. You lift twice. They want you to lift 20. They say lift five. You lift five. They say one more. Your hands are shaking. They encourage you. You lift it. They keep pushing you until you almost, almost think they are dying. And the point comes, you lift 20. They increase the weight. There is never an optimal level for people who gym if you conquer one today they add another one tomorrow and so their business is just to keep conquering weights no wonder they when they eat <laughs> when you find these people eat you will run 
the volume that they consume is a sign of what is happening to their cell system. <laughs> he leaves 100. They say one more. If you, they, they keep pushing them. And a point comes, the slim guy who went to the, went to the gym, the body becomes thick. After a while, the body begins to enlarge. And your friend that you used to hit on the chest and say, come on, relax, is now coming like this. Is the weight. Is the weight. That's how you pray. Gym your spirit until you can carry burdens for nations. And that's where I'm going to. Because the point will come when if you gym your spirit, God will now begin to depend on you to carry out his assignment. If you gym your spirit to a level, God will depend on you to carry the weight of a family. If you gym your spirit, God will depend on you to carry the weight of a nation. And the point may even come, God will depend on you to carry the weight of a continent. And so what we are doing in the kingdom that we call impact is a function of the weight that our spirit can carry. You know, if we go to the gym today, some of us will be able to carry 10, 10, 10, 10 kg. Another will carry 100 kg. Another may carry 200 kg. Another will carry 5,000 kg. Another will carry 10,000 kg. If you are a person who should carry 10 kg and they give you 1,000 kg, when they are on force, it will, it will strangle you or it will break your ribs. So God, even if he loves you, cannot give you a responsibility that is bigger than your weight. And so if you want to be relevant in the realm of God, you have to energize your spirit so that you build the capacity not just to take families, but to take systems, to take territories, and to take nations. This is why God uses prayer to train us. And so the first purpose of prayer is to build your spirit, is to exercise your spirit, is to charge your spirit. People pursue positions when their spirit is not charged. If you take a position that your spirit is not charged for, that position will ridicule you because it will show your insufficiency. It will show your weakness because when you stand, people have discernment. They will just know that, Kai, this man is not prepared. And it may even truncate the possibility of your journey in life and destiny because you will be cut off and you will not be given the opportunity to stand where you should stand again. Every Christian must be committed to daily exercise those who exercise they don't exercise once a week they exercise every day sometimes when i'm driving in the morning and i see the commitment people put in to exercise i wonder if they will do half for their spirits do you know people reshape their body through exercise somebody's tummy is becoming large all he needs to do is to run for two hours every morning and he's running for his tummy he's doing sit up for his tummy and he does that exercise after a while his body shape is beautified somebody is sick his organ is failing and he's doing exercise every morning to restore his organ so exercise can beautify you if you want to modify your body structure you can actually use exercise to modify now imagine what will happen to your spiritual manifestation if you give yourself to exercise that means the glory and the beauty a believer commands is a function of the nature of spiritual exercises he engages which prayer is key the first purpose of prayer is to exercise your spirit is to build capacity is to charge your spirit until you are able to take more responsibility until you are in spiritual health and until the beauty of God that is in your life begins to manifest everything physical exercise offers spiritual exercise also offers that's why Paul made that comparison but he showed us that the greater benefit is in spiritual exercise. The second purpose of prayer is to give you access to the proceeding word of God. This is where men are stratified. This is where men are categorized. This is where men begin to enjoy ranking and spiritual advantage. See, don't envy anybody and don't pity yourself. Your condition can change if the word can come to you. See, when we are praying, we are waiting for the word. I love the testimony of Brother Chinekwe on Sunday. How that there is a situation and he began to check in the spirit. And the moment the word came, he changed the situation that would have cost somebody his life. Somebody's car was stolen. And while he was talking to him, a word came to his spirit. And he said, I make the atmosphere around you to become darkness. I convert the atmosphere around you to become a wall of darkness. I decree that you make miscalculated, take miscalculated steps until you are arrested. 
and you find out things changing see when you begin to see the order and the ranking of men change it's because of the world that is coming to them it's not because of where they came from it's not it's not because of who they know see a word can come to you and the president will find you a word can come to you and money will find you a word can come to you and a city will open to you the secret of spiritual ranking and ascension is the quality of word that comes to you a activity until a word comes he said he was in prison but the bible said in psalm 107 from verse 17 he said until the time that his word came so if the word does not come he will remain in prison you are permitted to remain in your condition until a word comes to you that poverty will remain there until the word comes that danger will remain there until the word comes joseph was in prison for 14 years there was nothing that happened he was living in purity he had his giftings he had wisdom but the word had not come the bible said until the time verse 19 that his word came the word of the lord tried him instantly he said the king sent for to lose him so your chains will not fall until your word comes the fetters will remain there until your word comes he said the king sent for to lose him and to let him go free and he didn't just free him because the word that came was not just freedom it was exhortation he said the king sent for to lose him and he made him ruler of his people he gave him the right to teach his senators wisdom how can a prisoner become a teacher of senators the word has come if the word does not come remain in that captivity if the word did not come remain in that debt if the word does not come remain in that health crisis if the word does not come remain in that attack but if the word comes the captivity loses authority over you and so when you find men operating in authority their word have come if you jealous them you can't stop them manipulate against them you can't stop them gang up against them you can't stop them see this is why when god leaves a man nobody can bring him down nobody on earth i make both to tell you see it's god that makes men he said let us make man in our own image he can choose to make a man through another man he can choose to make a man through an environment but over and above that environment it is god that makes men follow me i will make you fishers of men and one of the ways god makes men is to send his word the man will come to you after the word has come the money will come to you after the word has come because it's until the time that this word comes and so when we are praying we are searching for the words we know the words are in the spirit but we have not received them this is why i tell people prayer is not about time there are more see how can you be doing an eternal business calibrating it into time time is a body what you are doing has its root in eternal past into eternal future there is no amount of time that can envelop it this is why even god gives us encounters and moments kairos moments because he knows that time is not sufficient to envelop spiritual realities and so in kairos moments there is a puncture in the spirit that brings that reality into your realm and one of the things that makes those punctures accessible to your space is when you begin to pray until the time that is what came this is why jesus speaking in matthew chapter 4 verse 4 is a man if you are man i don't know if you are another creature i'm not talking to angels i'm not talking to the beast of the field but if you are man he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god so if you want to live effectively you must be receiving word at the same ration that you eat food if you eat food three times a day then make sure you also receive words three times a day if not your physical life will be ahead of your spiritual life and if your spiritual life is not ahead of your spiritual life you are finished when you eat and live eating you are a dead man your spiritual life must be ahead of your physical life in fact if you receive physical food three times a day make sure you receive a word at least four times a day but that will not happen until you stay in the atmosphere of prayer and this is why peter said in second peter chapter 1 verse 20 he said knowing this first no prophecy of the scripture came by any private interpretation he said prophecy did not come in old time through human knowledge he said holy men of god speak as they were carried by the spirit of god and so holy men of god labored to stay in the spirit for them to be carried to hear 
those scriptures. These are not product of human intelligence. They are words that came to them. Imagine somebody received the whole book of Matthew. That's a word that came to him. Imagine somebody like Paul. See the words that, see the volume of words that came to Paul. The whole book of Romans. The whole book of first corinthians the whole book of second corinthians the whole book of first timothy second timothy titus why, why do you why why don't you how do you now wonder the quality of life that paul lived see the kind of volumes of wars that came to one man and those are the ones he wrote to those churches there were many he didn't write he said when timothy is coming tell him to carry my books and my parchments because there are other words that came that is not for the church those ones are for me and one man received so much word that he wrote 14 books out of the 24, 27 books of the Bible. You think that kind of man can be small? No. Too many words come to him for him to remain small. But how did Paul operate there? I thank my God that I pray in tongues more than all of you. This is not a gift. This is a realm. It's a realm of access. And so prayer gives us access. The moment your word comes, you become invincible. Why do we pray? We pray in order to catch our words. Because man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What is the word of the Lord for you in this season? Around your security, around your prosperity, around your calling. What is that word? It was in the place of prayer. We were praying that period, I think, for 90 days. I was not even the one leading the prayer. It was Sister Nessa that was leading the prayer. And suddenly, as we were praying, the word came to me. It said, win five million souls. If I didn't have that word, number one, I won't venture into it. If I didn't have that word, number two, the resources won't come. Do you know what it takes to win five million souls? Every week we organize crusade, we spend millions, 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 millions. And it's not just the money. There are people on the field who labor night and day. Intercessors are praying. People are mounting sound. They are mounting equipment. Nobody comes one day and complains. They do it with joy. They, ha they are happy that they are doing it. Sometimes they do it, we even forget to buy refreshment. They go back home hungry. There is not one complaint any day. They are excited doing it. And then we are doing this thing back to back from the place of rest. Nobody is being called, please bring money. And then when you show up, you talk miracles. We have never attended one that there was no miracle. As you talk, that's how souls are being won. The equipment that power those crusades is not a joke. As we are hiring, we are buying. And we have almost bought all the equipment for the outdoor meeting. So money is coming. Men are working. The word of the Lord is fresh. Miracles are happening. And the most fascinating part are the partners. In this period of economic meltdown, somebody has not met you before and he loses his peace. Sometimes people are sending money around 2 a.m. in the morning. They wake up from sleep. They wake up from sleep carry their phone and do transfer they can't sleep the holy ghost wakes them up and says send that money now and they send the money before they get their peace to sleep how do you manipulate people to do that and it's not only in nigeria one of our consistent partners is a young lady from sydney australia she will send the money she will thank god that she's sending and she will call you she will be grateful that you received it what kind of heart is that until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. See, the quality of your life is engrafted into the words that you catch. Your seasons are in the words that you catch. Your manifestations are in the words that you catch. If God didn't speak, we would have been begging those setting up the equipment every day. And they won't be there. If God didn't speak, and we wanted to do it out of ambition, imagine we are just one year old. We are running projects of weekly, weekly projects in millions. Would have been in debt now, would have run out of ministry with embarrassment. But when God speaks, everything falls in place. Is this Saeed that comes every week singing and, and releasing the anointing of God? Nobody gives him a dime. Make no mistakes about it. Everybody's heart is needed. In fact, the last one humbled me. When we announced the crusade, one of the fathers called me and said, I was checking, looking for Bluebird to get the venue. These are people in their 60s and 70s. When I entered the crusade ground, even daddy with his wife was there. Elderly man. Retired Navajo Commodore Anayok was there with his wife. 
generals in the army come to sit in the in outreach and they just listen to the word of god finish and go home these are our fathers and grandfathers but when the word comes everything aligns on your job the word can come in your family the word can come and most importantly in nigeria we need wars to come now that's why we have to keep the radar open because if we don't pray we can't catch it we can't catch it the wars are like radiation your spirit must be activated in order to connect to it and when it comes it becomes your reality until the time that his word came a prisoner is not actually a prisoner most of the people you call prisoners are prime ministers the difference is the word when the word comes the status of a prisoner can change to a prime minister what is that word this is why we pray see when we are insisting on prayer it's not to let people know that we pray I tell people forget this cock and bull nonsense I'm a prayer warrior I'm an intercessor relax every believer is an intercessor you have not given yourself to it that's why do you is it in this war of terror of treachery that you are waiting for somebody to pray for you pray for you <laughs> if you call yourself that thank God but if you don't call yourself that woe unto you you are in trouble every one of us must have the designation of an intercessor i tell people you will be an intercessor before you are a preacher you will be an intercessor before you are a banker you will be an intercessor before you are you are a politician else you will be cut off nobody will catch the words of your destiny for you if they hear it is a confirmation how do you build faith and confidence it's even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he said, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Who has that level of assurance that God is with him? It's because of what God told him. He said, for thou art with me. So the reason I walk through the valley of the shadow of death is not because I'm smart. It's because I know God has told me that he will be with me. When John showed up, why was he so bold? He was not afraid of the Pharisees. He was not afraid of being cast out of the synagogue. He was not afraid of being killed. Because he heard things. He said, the one that sent me, the same said unto me he had things this is not zeal people catch words and so the second purpose of prayer is to catch words the bible says, carry with you words carry them carry them when you are going into a nation carry a word when you are going into business carry a word but those words are not a gift they are caught and the way your spirit is activated to catch them is through prayer too many are not praying Do you think God will deliver Nigeria because Christians are many? <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Turkey used to be 98% Christians. Today it's 98% Muslims. It's not about number. It's about utterances. You catch it, it becomes a memorial. Because God cannot deny his word. He said heaven and earth will pass away. He said not one jot or titu of my world we pass away and so when you begin to pray you are positioning yourself to catch the everlasting word of God the unfailing and infallible utterances of God carry with you words hi myself and pastor Sonny we were going from Adamawa in Adamawa to the boundary somewhere around Mubi it was like 40 minutes to Cameroon in the night sometimes we are in Meduguri Medugu oh, are you crazy even after I got wedded after marriage three days after wedding I carried my wife to Meduguri you don't take that it will be stupidity but I heard something Jesus told me, say, because I live, you will see tomorrow. I have heard something. So I go to places where people fast to go. I stroll there casually. 
There was a time when I was traveling with Pastor Victor. We were going to Taraba State. Between Zakibian and Wokari, there was crisis between Tib and Joko. Benue Lynch will stop at the boundary. You will wait for a full animal who is crossing to carry you because you can be cut off. A, a, jukum, a, a, a full animal. Because if the Jukum cross here, they kill them. If you are Benue cross there, they kill you. When we were crossing, all the checkpoints were desolate. We, we saw dead bodies on the ground. But we know we don't die. No, we won't die. Unless we lay our lives down. God has spoken. He said, because I live, you shall live also. I don't need prayer to be safe anymore. Ask them who travel with me. I sleep every time I start traveling. That's one of the ways I rest. They pray, they play, there can be turbulence. Nothing happens. I was in Ghana going to preach. I landed that evening. We we're on the way to the, 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 the venue. And a car, a truck hit our car from the side. The car started spinning on the road. Went and hit the, the, the middle separation, the pavement there. Pope and crossed it and was stuck there. They were shouting. Ah, there was no, no, no leap of, hey, no. It is well. Calm down. Open the door. Calm down. Because I live, you shall live also. Now, that is a place where it's a, it's a reflex action. It is not you composing yourself. Car is spinning. People are shouting, stop. Why car is still spinning? Renor Kusi got up. That's my pastor in Ghana. He says, sir, this thing I've seen today, I believe in you. It's not when he stopped. Car was spinning. Hey, calm down. It's well. As he hit the stuff and stop, relax. Open the door. We are fine. And we came down, entered another car, went to the meeting, and manifested the power of God. Somebody else can pray. Father, deliver us from evil. Some of us don't pray that prayer anymore. Because when the word comes, it's an insurance system. When God told me, because I live, you shall live also, he stopped, he has, he has removed that type of prayer from my syllabus. You, you can't die. You, you are kept. I have, it's, it's God's faithfulness and credibility that is my own safety now because I've heard it. There's no way I can preach it and another person will enter until he catches it by revelation. These are the things we, we are like archaeologists. We are excavators. When we are praying and pressing in the spirit, it's wars we are looking for. Because we know that our seasons are tied to wars. Our manifestations are tied to wars. That's why I tell people it's not about age. It's not about gender. It's not about race. It's not about where you came from. What wars have you caught? If you catch it, if you catch it, oh dear Lord, it can change everything. When you see men who are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved, it's because they are built on the rock. That's why the Bible is speaking, it said, don't build your hands, house upon the quicksand. He said, let your house be built upon the rock. He said, when the wind comes and hits upon it boisterously, he said, that house will stand. Words, words. The second purpose of prayer is to help you catch words. The proceeding word of God. See, words are moving in the spirit. Television networks are passing here now. Internet network is passing here. But you need the equipping to trap it. If you trap it, you can watch a video. What I'm sharing now, somebody is watching it in Australia. That means what I'm saying here is traveling as far as Australia. This thing I'm talking here is traveling as far as Australia. But you will need an antenna and a device to trap it. When you start praying, you are awakening the device that traps walls. Walls that come from heaven. And when you catch heavenly walls, you will live heavenly life. Hmm. Abba. Oh yeah. Hi. I want to stop here. My spirit now is charging. My spirit is charging. My spirit is charging. Hi. There was, the other time I was praying. I was praying and light hit me. Light came out of the wall and entered me. And I entered the trance. Ah. And I, I 
I started seeing things. See, people don't know these things. So when sometimes when you talk, they say you are proud. The energy of the world will overtake you. When you start talking, if you have caught a word, if you have caught a word for healing, when you start talking about divine health, that energy will overtake you. If somebody hears you say, who is this man talking like a God? He will understand that you are now talking a reality that lives on your inside. It will take over you. And so it's the strength of that utterance that has come to you. The other time I was, I was caught up and I saw there was crisis and people were running. And when they want to go to safety, they will come to me and drop dollars. They will drop pounds. They will drop naira. They were hippie money. And the commanding officer, because when I came into that atmosphere, I stood on something that looked like a mountain. And a, a club, a weapon, entered my, fasting itself to my hands. I didn't know where it came from. And as I was wondering what was going on, a wind carried me into the battlefield. And I started fighting. And I saw these creatures that looked like crocodile. But they were walking on two feet with tails. Their head was like crocodile and they had weapons. And the battle was brutal. And while I was yet fighting, one of the commanding officers came to me and said, you, go and take people to safety. This is why me, I don't despise fathers. Because I know that they are ranking in the spirit. And I know men walk in cadres, in dispensations. He said, go and take people to safety. And as I went, the people were dropping money, dropping pounds, dropping dollars, dropping all kinds of treasures. And I was directing them. And I said, take your money. They said, no, keep it, keep it. Ah, I know when, when we started ministry, I know we, we will not need to beg for money. We, they showed me there. They showed me there. So it's God that go to touch people to send money. It touches them. One called the winner yesterday and said, please, I'm from Sierra Leone. There, there's this money I, 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 I want to send, but the bank wants the ministry to just write to identify me. I don't know if I will have the privilege to receive a letter from Apostle to identify me. Just to say they are sending to us and that it don't, it's not connected to anything fraud. It's not quacha I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about US dollars. Not quacha. I've never spoken to him. I don't know him from anywhere. And even the letter, I'm not writing it. It's somebody, one of the leaders that will write and send. But at the end of the day, dollars will hit the account. For the kingdom, not me. So don't say, hey, this man lost money. But so the work will be going. The work will be going. You won't know how it's happening as the wind blow it where it listed. He said, no man knoweth where it's coming from or where it goes. He said, so are they that are born by the Spirit of God. We've caught words. Baraku and Hadona. Baraku and Baraku Adona. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Baraku. Adolam, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Daye. When you catch words, you become invincible. We were created to walk in the stature of the immortals, but we need utterances that come from the realms of the immortals to function like the immortals. That's the code, and it is prayer that positions you, positions you to catch those words. The second purpose of prayer is to catch words. A man's weakness and defeat is tied to the scarcity of all trances coming in his quarters. The third purpose of prayer is for transformation and transfiguration. Our greatest limitation as men is not the devil. Our greatest limitation as men is not the environment we live in. Yes, these things can pose some level of impedance and impediment. But our greatest limitation is the operation of the flesh. You see, for the flesh wrestles against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and the two is one against the other. That is an ancient war. The job of the flesh is to, def is to defy the potentials and the possibility of the spirit. And so the reason the spirit can be full of potential, even in the equivalence of the Christ, yet not manifest, is because the flesh were combined. It's the job of flesh to diffuse the potential of spirits of the spirit and so when we begin to pray one thing prayer is engineered to achieve is to decimate the flesh 
is to steal the flesh. This is why when a man begins to pray, he will notice that the flesh will begin to wrestle him. Distractions begin to come. Time suddenly becomes elongated. Five minutes is like two hours. The reason is that prayer attacks the power of flesh. And so that reaction is just like setting fire in the hole where there's a snake. The, the snake will jump out and try to. That's what flesh is doing. The flesh was masquerading, hiding and, 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 and oppressing your possibilities. Now that prayer has come, prayer has a way of revealing everywhere flesh has strength. And so when a man begins to pray, he's launching an assault on the flesh. And if he understands the technology going on and it doesn't stop, after a while, flesh will give way. And so when flesh gives way, what happens is that transformation and transfiguration takes place. Because transformation, you know the flesh is not your body. It's the human nature, the fallen nature. And the fallen nature is weaved into the soul of a man. Are we together? So when you begin to pray, what happens is that transformation, light begins to come to you to renew you. Some of the scriptures you read that didn't make much sense to you. As you start praying, God will take one word or one verse and he begins to open it. So the light component of that scripture is now shared on you. It's that light now that will renew the mind. Many think it's just by reading Bible that the mind is renewed. When you read Bible, you store the word in your soul. It's when you meditate or you pray that the scriptures open. Meditation is to talk what you have read to yourself. You keep talking it. As you are talking it, what is happening is that you are trying to align with frequency. Frequency simulations are taking place until resonance happens. It's just the way Joshua was walking around Jericho until on the seventh day, alignment was achieved and they blasted and the wall sank. So when you are meditating and you are talking scriptures to yourself because the word is Hagar, you are trying to align frequencies. When resonance takes place, that word, the frequency of that word becomes the frequency with which the Holy Ghost spoke it. Then light breaks into your soul. Or when you are in the place of prayer, the Holy Ghost himself will come. That's why he said the Holy Ghost helped our infirmities. Romans 8.26 For we know not what to pray for as we ought to. How, how be it the Spirit helped? And what it shows there is that the Spirit begins to reveal to us. Because that kind of help is to bring you access to light, to truth in their authentic state. But if you don't pray, you will have logos in your head that will not translate to anything. Do you know that when you overstock fire with wood, the fire will quench? There must be a balance between wood and fire in order to produce heat to cook. So while you are reading, you must also engage prayer. And so when you begin to engage prayer, prayer has the potential of transformation and transfiguration. In Matthew 17 verse 2 and 3, he said, even Jesus, as he prayed, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. This is what Paul was teaching in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 1 and 2. He said, we have a tabernacle that is a heaven. Our glory is like a vest, a garment. He said, it's a heaven. He said, but the way we put it on is to travail. When we start praying, when we start praying, when we start praying, he says something happens to us. That tabernacle begins to clothe us. And when that tabernacle clothes you, it kills the potentials of flesh. And so when you find people who don't pray, they can even use the word of God to defraud. They can use the word of God to swindle people. But when you pray, you engage the spirit that brought that word. And when you engage that spirit, the energy that comes from the realm of that spirit will alter you, even your molecular structure. In Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1, he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He had words. He was speaking words. But for the first time, he encountered the spirit that originated that word. And immediately, nobody spoke to him. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell among a people of unclean lips. Woe unto me. And the Bible said, one of the angels that when, what was moving took of the coals that was in the midst of the fire and touched his tongue and said, your iniquity has passed. When men don't pray, there will be wolves in sheep clothing. Using the word of God to steal, to cheat, and to manipulate people. They will bend scripture in order to satisfy their ambition and appetite. This is why we have criminals today standing on the altar, wearing ties, no integrity, liars, 
stealing from innocent and gullible people you are calling for partnership but there's no kingdom assignment that you are doing visibly what is the money for it's for rich watches iPhones and cars it's for holidays in nations Bahamas and the kingdom suffers because there's no prayer when a man begins to die prayer will stop the first sign that a man's spirit is under attack is that he won't pray anymore and the first sign that a man's spirit is healthy is that prayer will begin because one of the things that your spirit loves to do naturally is to pray you may not have backslidden to the point of sinning if you are not praying now you're under attack that's what i'm saying because if you are healthy you will want to talk to god you will not you will want to participate there the world will be bubbling out of your spirit you want to know how witnesses become lecturers having no power having nothing to show to their generation it's when the altar of prayer dies they are full of language but nothing to show the walls can't convict and the walls don't carry the weight of glory to do what the glory was designed to do and so when men pray the second thing that happens to them is that transformation will begin to take place did you read the bible it said when you carry your offering to the altar and you have and your brother has an ought against you it didn't say you have an ought against your brother he said your brother has an ought against you he said leave that offering he said go and make peace when you come to the altar the emphasis is purging the emphasis is transformation and the emphasis is transfiguration you can't pray and pray consistently and not have the holy ghost begin to purge you or to refine you paul speaking he said for this cause i pray ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. So you cannot have the knowledge of Him except you pray. Because that kind of knowledge is granted. He may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know. That is the knowledge that liberates. That is the knowledge that changes. That is the knowledge that transfigures and transforms. It comes when men pray. He said, for this cause, I bow down my knees and pray. Even the nature of God that we wear is activated and intensified when we begin to pray. Because in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 15, Paul spoke about prayer. I pray to the, the Father and our God and Father of the family in heaven and on earth. Why? That he may open you up to the potentials and the propensities of love. That you may know the height, the depth, the width and the breadth of the love of God. Even that love that passes knowledge. So you can't enter the fullness of the nature and the essence of God except as prayer comes in. Either somebody prays for you or you engage that prayer yourself. In Colossians 4 12, he said, Epaphras is one of you, a born servant of Christ, laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Transfiguration, transformation, perfection in the presence and in the things of the Spirit comes when men begin to pray. And so the fourth purpose of the third purpose of prayer is transformation and transfiguration. Ah, we're out of time. Hallelujah. 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 two things that are important the first is to have a PVC so that you can exercise your franchise if you don't have a PVC now to vote you are wrong and then the second is to invest prayer because a man will be good until he ascends a throne thrones are powers and as I talk about the next point you will see it you will keep praying. This is when they enter covenants. Covenants that mar and, and maligns the potential of good governance. 
Because now they are under pressure. Anything you bring, they agree. Because the only thing they are seeing is to have them announced on that day. This is where they enter into dark covenants and deep demonic commitments. This is where compromises take place. Somebody walks up to you and say, I will support you, I will give this kind of money, but I will do what I want, you will give me immunity. These are the times. And so we must invest prayer for the man of God that he will keep being transformed and transfigured so that when men come to him, the glory of God upon his life will overshadow them and they will drop their demonic ambition and submit to the government of that glory. Because a man can, will either help you through negotiation or he will help you because favor and glory will compare him. If a man is helping you through negotiation, is interest for interest. But when he's helping you by glory and favor, it becomes God's agenda. And so the reason we must invest prayer now is so that God's candidate as transfiguration is taking place. When men see him, they will see the glory. You know that when, when Stephen was transfigured, the Bible said those who looked upon him looked thought he was an angel. Many people will go to that ballot confused. But as we are sending prayers, sending prayers, and transfiguration is taking place, they will, they are, their perspective about him will change. I was telling somebody, I said, they have three major people in Nigeria today contending for the position. And if you like, you can say four. And the ratio of Christian to the sons of the born woman is one is to three. We don't need campaign. If we are kingdom people, we shouldn't have campaign. There are six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Four of them are dominated by Christians. Forget the manipulation through census. You talk, they say Kanu is populated. Is Kanu more populated than Lagos? Is manipulated. See, when they census, they, they do all kinds of things. Just to have demographic to oppress people during election. And the reason it looked as if the north is heavy when it comes to election is because those from the southeast and the south south decided to pull out of politics because they were marginalized. So when election comes, you see that the results from Enugu, Anambra, Imo is 400,000, they don't go out to vote. But the case is not the same now because now everybody is coming out. So you will know that all of the talk that Kanu, Katsina, Kaduna is a charade. They are not more populated than us. And when you start talking, they say, these are religious by gods. Whereas, what harmonizes the north is religion. It's not politics. It's not money. The reason they can pull out at the 11th hour and quickly agree is because they say it's for Allah. It's for Islam. It's for Jihad. Did you not see the fake Sharia law? that was propounded and propagated seven, eight years ago. Now, because they came into power, everything about Sharia law, nobody is hearing it again. But when the Christian was in power, they were forcing it in Sharia. It's all to, to distort government, just to have an advantage. And when you talk from the standpoint of religion, they say you are religious by God. We are not just saying, vote this person because he's a Christian. No, if he doesn't have the credentials, I will not speak for him. But there's nobody on that ballot that is better qualified than him. There's no one. There's no one. And the one that they are insisting on that is, is, is also good or better. Can you handle the problem of Nigeria when you are sleeping in a meeting? A 30 minutes meeting, you have dozed off. Is that the person that can handle Nigeria? Let's not challenge his antecedent. Assume everything they say is true. But he has retired. He should go and sleep. His grandchildren should come and visit him. Let him have rest. Because that's where he, are, he is now in the cadre of life. Because we don't need somebody who will be sleeping in Aso Rock and a Kaba will be ruling Nigeria. So we are not saying this just because we are Christian. We are also saying this because of the necessity for national inclusiveness, for equity, for justice. You can't marginalize people consistently. A seven year to eight year administration is about to end when no Christian had the say. Even the vice president who was a Christian was shot and puppeted throughout the administration. All the relevant offices, 60 to 70% of the relevant offices are Islamic and you want to transfer to another Islamic person. Today Boko Haram comes to knock on people's door and, 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 and extract them. There is so much audacity around kidnapping, around violence. 
because even if you arrest them there is there is sen sentimental attachment arrest the full animal on the road here he will call the presidency if you like arrest him in benue he can call somebody from Asu Rock. and you want that level of audacity to continue being propagated we are not religious by gods but we are also not naive so you can't come to national television and talk about equity justice patriotism whereas all your activity is nepotistic is segregating all your activity is is aggressively against the other religion and you want people to keep quiet because we, you want us through naivety to act civil no we are wiser than that we know better we know better after all the person running the Christian running is not running with the Christian as a running mate. He's running with a northerner from the north. A Muslim person from the north as a running mate. We are not the one who picked one religion completely for our ticket. So there's a balance of equity. For the ancients to arise, for the princes to be born, for the kings to ascend. Ali, Ali, oh. Ali yo, 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 Now hear this, because prayer engenders transfiguration. Even if it's 30 minutes, release incense. Because transfiguration is glory subduing flesh. If you keep releasing prayer, the glory of God on the man we become so high that even his enemies will have no choice but to support him because we saw that oppression in the life of solomon that solomon had rest and reigned because of that operation of favor of wisdom and of glory pray for him that your five minutes prayer may be what completes the circuit of intercessors around nigeria because people may have prayed that five minutes the holy ghost is telling you to pray would have been a gap in the intercessory chain and so God used it to fuse it. So there's no prayer that is too small. Raise an incense. Every day, ask that this man, I send glory. You see, a puffer has played and the church was perfected. Pray that it will be perfected. He has antecedents, he has credentials, and he represents the interest of the kingdom. And so we fortify him with prayer. We fortify him with favor. We fortify him with glory. We fortify him with power. We fortify him with influence. We fortify him with money. Paul said, if after the manner of flesh, I fought the beast of Ephesus, we contend against the powers of darkness and we decree that God's man wins. God's man reigns. Ali, oh, Ali, oh, Ali, Ali, oh. Oh, Ali, Ali, oh, Ali, oh, Ali, oh, Ali, Ali, oh, oh, oh. Mantus have been given to the church once, once again. again. Mandates have been given to the church once, once again. again. Seasons have been given to the church once, once again. again. Moments have been given to the church once, once again. again for the priest to be born for the princes to arise for the kings to be run for the thrones to be given ali ali yo ali yo ali yo ali ali yo oh ali ali yo ali yo ali yo ali ali yo oh imagine if 10 million of us are praying and all of us are echoing one man 10 million do you know the weight of that sacrifice he said the prayers of the saints revelation 5 8 are sent to heaven as orders he said they are stored in golden vials that's what the 20 and 4 elders fetches from in order to carry out throne room legislation imagine if 10 million pray 20 million pray we will not only vote we will also pray because there is a fortification of glory, wisdom, and favor that comes through prayer. He said, when Esther fasted and prayed, the king said, I will give you my kingdom. Esther 5, 2, and 3. Whatever you ask, I will give you, even if it is up to half of the kingdom. Why do you think a president that was nepotistic 
a pre president that was a segregatist person a president that was sensitive to one religion and one tribe suddenly woke up and said election must be free and fair because things are already happening in the spirit he said i saw what looked like the feast of a man elijah said that is the sign of an abundance of rain he will not only insist for free and fair election he will ensure that the writing is done and the writing will be done when the god the man of god ascends that throne it's our time it's our season it's not it's not one one politician who is coming to take nigeria as his retirement benefit my destiny is your retirement benefit the agenda of god is your retirement benefit if you give somebody money go and collect it nigeria is not yours god has an agenda here Hali hali yo, hali yo, hali yo, hali hali yo, oh. Mandates have been given to the church once again. Mandates have been given to the church once again. Thrones have been given to the church once again for the kings to be born. For the presidents to arise, yeah. for the kingdoms to be delivered, for the nations to be born. Ali Ali O, Ali O, Ali O, Ali Ali O, Ali Ali O, Ali O, Ali O, Ali O. The name of the Lord will not be mocked. No, the name of the Lord will not be mocked. You look at a population of christians dominating for your political zones and you are running on a ticket you pick after a muslim ruled for eight years you pick another muslim as if that is not enough you now carry a muslim as a running mate wow what an audacity after rubbish you know the politicians in apc all the Christian politicians put together, rubbish them, and told them they were naughty. Major positions in the country, all of them given to them. Even when they came to run primaries, over 30 people applied for the national chairmanship position. They allowed them, they bought form. They didn't stop them. They bought form that went for 100 million. And then at the end of the day, they came and said they appointed a pick somebody who is still a Muslim. And then that national cabinet, I was told only the assistant secretary is a Christian. And then they conduct election, a Muslim wins, and you pick a Muslim for running mate. What then will be the next dispensation? And then you want us to be naive, to come and say, well, uh, uh, we are so civilized. It's not about what you, the, the, the religion you, you are into. How many mocks were, were, were burnt in the last dispensation? Somebody say, God forbid. The Lord approved not. The Lord approved not. We will pray and we will vote. And there will be a change. And the man of God will win. You know, some of us were calm because of order. We wanted the, a legal thing, highly judicial in the spirit. This is not a religious engagement. That's why you have to be careful to pray. Pray in your understanding and use the right words. And I'm going to be teaching you about the types of prayer and the laws of prayer. So you will know how to pray it. There's a prayer of petition. There's a prayer of intercession. There's a prayer of agreement. All of these prayers are necessary in situations like this. Intercession, petition, and agreement. And if you don't know how it works, we may not have results. That's why this series will be done in this period. Because we are at the 11th hour, and at the 11th hour, there is greater need for intensification. Prayer, legislation, and litigation. If it doesn't happen, a city can be overrun. Let me show you another scripture. Acts 13 verse 7. Paul went to a city to preach, and there was a sorcerer who blindfolded the governor and made him to reject what was of God. See, when people can't see 
what God is saying and they are even offended. Don't, don't be angry with them. They are blind. Second Corinthians 4 to say, For our gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. With all the marginalization that we have seen in the last eight years, a Christian still stands up and is telling you, Don't be a religious by God. Don't this, don't that. Maybe because they've not kidnapped his or her relative or they've not bought a church where his mother attended. So he thinks it's, it's news, it's national news. There are people that the whole family were burnt, explode, butchered just because they went to pray. There are, there are states in this country today that you dare not start a business. Either you relocate or you live in fear. There are states in this country you can't even go to school. You say you are a Christian. If they see that you are fire, you don't need to do anything. They come and accuse you that you taught the Quran. Or they accuse you that you insulted Muhammad. And before you know, they stone you to death. Nothing happens. Nobody is arrested or prosecuted. Since we started hearing about Boko Haram, you will, have, you will hardly hear that publicly anybody has been prosecuted. You are a barrister. Is there a record that Boko Haram people, have they not captured Boko Haram before? They've captured severally. How many have they prosecuted publicly that is on record? You arrest somebody in Benway, they say bring him to Abuja. And the case, you don't hear anything again. And then you hear that a prison break happened. And so many of high profile terrorists who have been put in prison, those are the ones arrested who cannot be let go, have been in prison for more than six years. What are they doing there? Some of them, their cases have not even been decided. And then you wake up, you say, eh, nobody's against those on the side of Islam or those who are traditionalists or those who are given to sorcery. Nobody's against anybody. But we insist that there must be equity. We insist that there must be balance. Nigeria does not belong to one religion. Because if Christians rule today and only Christians keep ruling, a time will come when Christians will, may, may, because there are those who are zealous, who, are not, who have not learned Christ, may begin to oppress Muslims. We are not advocating for that either. And if Muslims rule and there is no balance for a Christian too to rule, then those who are also by gods of the Islamic order or who are passionate about their own understanding of Islam can take powers to their hands and begin to oppress Christians because of the religious sentiment that exists between leaders and followers of the same clan. And so we insist that there must be equity, there must be justice. We insist that nepotism must not have a place and we insist for natural justice. Is it only Muslims that are educated? In the last dispensation, you say you are looking for qualified people and more than 60% are Muslims. Wow. All of a sudden. And we have not seen too many Muslims on the list of inventors. How many of them are inventors? How many of them are on the list of inventors from tiny memoria? All of a sudden, they are the most educated people and we don't have education, educated people from different parts of Nigeria again. The other day, Dr. Paul was listing the portfolios, major portfolios. I almost wept. And so, because we cannot carry guns, bows and arrows, we will carry the walls of God in the place of prayer. Because when we pray, we change things. He said, my people who are called by my name, we humble themselves and pray. He said, the way you deal, to deal with a mountain is to pray and not to doubt. And he said, whatever mountain it is, be it a mountain of government, be it a mountain of media. He said, when you pray, believe that you have it and you shall have it. So prayer is the weapon that changes things. He said, when you pray, believe. So the way to legislate and litigate is to pray. And when you pray, believe that you have it. And he say, you shall have what you say. So in this season, we are going to pray. And we'll pray and monitor the election from the altar until that which God spoke through his prophets and until that which is just finds expression. Prayer is for litigation. Prayer is for legislation. I'll list the, the last three since we don't have time anymore so that we can study on it. The fifth purpose of prayer is to win trust through consistency. 
when a man begins to pray and pray consistently on the strength of his consistency in prayer God begins to commit things to him Jesus in Mark 1 35 the Bible said early in the morning on a daily basis he went to pray it was that same enterprise he carried out on the Mount of Transfiguration and he said he returned in the power of the Spirit if you don't pray God can entrust things to you in Daniel 6 verse 10 to 12 we saw that Daniel prayed three times every day and a point came God entrusted him with influence we need to be entrusted with spiritual realities spiritual assets spiritual facilities for us to be able to advance God's kingdom and so when a man begins to pray it may not happen overnight but eventually you will notice that certain spiritual things will begin to be plugged into you they are called trust they are not a gift sometimes it's authority in business in the economic world sometimes it's authority in government sometimes it's authority in the academia God begins to trust you with things favor wisdom all kinds of things begin to be trusted to you so prayer is a means of winning trust from the realm of God through consistency number six prayer is the most assured pathway to intimacy because when you are praying when you are reading you are you can read about God and not engage God but it's impossible to really pray and not engage God when you are praying you are not doing something about God you are talking to God directly so prayer is a spiritual infrastructure for building intimacy when men pray they know God and finally prayer gives you right to begin to participate in the immortal realms and in the ages to come we saw in Matthew 17 verse 2 as Jesus was praying he said Moses and Elijah stood with him so the realms immortal are awoken and we are summoned to participate in it when we begin to pray in Revelations 1 10 and Revelations 4 1 John said I was in the spirit on the last day that is prayer and in Revelations 4 1 we saw that a door opened in heaven and they said to him come up hither that was when he started seeing the throne room so when men pray God begins to allow them to participate in the ages to come and in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 to 24 we know that it's already our right but it will take prayer for us to enter he said you have come to Mount Zion Hebrews 12 22 to 24 he said but ye are come to Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God to the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels in verse 23 it says to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn which is written in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirit of just men made perfect go ahead verse 24 and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Eber you have come there but for it to become a reality to you prayer must awaken your senses to it or awaken that realm to you and so when we pray we begin to participate Paul was the one speaking he said I know a man many years ago 2nd Corinthians 12 verse 2 whether he was in the flesh or in the spirit I can't tell but he said that man was carried to the third heavens John was the one who was carried to the heavens and so these things are not new this is our heritage in Christ but it will take prayer for us to access it and so seven purpose of prayer number one is to exercise your spirit number two is to access the proceeding Word of God number three is to engage transformation and transfiguration number four is to provoke legislation and litigation number five is to win trust through consistency number six is to build intimacy with God and number seven is to give you the right and privilege to participate in the realms to come can we bow our heads and talk to the Lord now even as you go to release incense concerning Nigeria and concerning the forthcoming election can we bow our heads and talk to God cause these words to become a reality Sibakato Haraka Zeli Gabara Sudra Frashekivra Natalish Zirakuba Aktevila Baragato Zedegila Barakai Zazina Paradidi Garagato Zelemano Brakida Asta Vrigda Orokodia Taragadina Sasta Rapakate Kabaya Jiba Kabator Ragabadi Baragida Sonda Zedegadina Taladish Onte Kipa Ragabida Paras Zadadina Zanzavrota Ah for the kings to be born, for the ancients to arise. Ah, Eligamana Sadiga Pai, Rabiga Pate Brondo Susa, 
Aracatini Zamza Fracatila Paradosta Reke Paracusa Zadiga Pa Manteke Paro Zadiga Pa Manteki Barada Gazia Rakapadosa Dada Gabira Ta Zadeke Pado Rakiba Paracadosca Rakapanda Zusa Ada Paradia Rato Zaka Patekaya Haya Zelekiba Rakipano Zatapro Zabratia Zadegadida Salagata Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. There are five prayer points we'll pray now quickly as we close. Number one, let's pray that God will decorate his man with glory, with favor, with wisdom. See, he will not say the wrong thing. Sometimes you say the wrong thing. You may be the right man, but you may say the wrong thing and it will bring reproach. Let God give him wisdom. To say the right words in season. He said, how forceful are right words in seasons. Let's pray that God will give him favor and God will decorate him with glory. Go ahead and make those declarations now. Manta kiparate zegeparo sabatatila rapa shabadina sataka yete kepara sadida parosta manta kibora rakapadia jatakapando sotokori rakapa zadegapadia manta kiba rakoba shabdaporina talavata in Takibara Dagazia, Rakapapa Konde, Hoyas, Ela Tomaladia Sata, Rakiba Dozo Paradina, Rakido Bondo Robocoria, Ita Kapashatina Padaga, Rakabondo Robocori, Rakiba Mantaki Paradon Sadragavi, Rakapatagabonda, Rekida Sa. Oh God, He's clothed with glory, He's clothed with favor, He's increasing in wisdom, Mantaki Ba, Reketodo Shabada, Lord. You gave Solomon so much wisdom that all his enemies were stilled. We decree that the enemy of the move of God, they are still, they are shut down in the name of the Lord Jesus. Manto Barakida, Ragabando, Zotoporodia, Satagabia, Mantekiba, your servant will not speak the wrong words. He's clothed with favor, he's clothed with glory. Marekira Pa, Zede, Arobo, Sadekania, Marota, Pariata, Isu. Baragodo, Azuata, Esuate, Iro, Parika, Azuzo, Sosina, Arakabo, Satagabia, Rakabonda, Sadaga, Helia, Somana, Raboma, Shabdeke, Eluka, Pariga, Parado, Monto, Cabaradia, Regebo, Manteke, Pariato, Jagatagadiata, Oh, Rabba, Shabda, Haliga, in the name of Jesus, my God, let's go ahead and pray for God's servant. Let's decree that God will cause his influence to explode. The Bible said Jesus returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad. This is influence because it was not just about popularity. The moment Jesus entered the temple from that, that mountain, he said demons began to scream. The moment Jesus began to move, the sick started coming. Multitudes started coming. So it was not just about popularity. The cities were drawn to him. So this fame was also a kind of the Anakazo power that drew territories, drew cities to him. Can we pray that God will put same grace upon his servant? They think he's just popular online. Can they be surprised that people will travel from one part of the country to another? People will travel from nations to this country and they will vote and their votes will count that the influence upon this man, every procrastination, every election lethargy that stops men from stepping out to exercise their franchise on the strength of the trumpet and the shofar that will be blown in the spirit that God will cause men to rise up to vote. Even those who say, I have no business with the an election and politics anymore, there will be a stirring in their spirit. That Laura, Edes, Eluka, Paraki, Azuzakari, Paragatakabash, Ayendo, Romatakari, Uruakatoa, Eswate, Bruatata, Azuzura, Arribo, Vokakaziatoa, Amaloa, Ruane, Eswato, Aswa, Arrobos, Aodea, Beratoa, Indigmanakas, Aswate, Pondro, Azude, Asua, Rados, Nadia, Balagasagabado, Eyuna, Zaido, Nero, Tecafina, Raboa, Stau, Eyadero, Alopo, Rotoko, Pacata, 
Lord, the fame of your servant is spread abroad. And Lord, everybody that hears about him, there is a compelling force in their spirit. And they are rising up, not just to talk about him. They are participating. They are exercising their franchise. By the Spirit of God, and my God, everybody is talking about him. The momentum is building. We refuse that the momentum dies. We refuse that the momentum dies. People are planning to travel. People are bold. They are emboldened to go exercise their franchise. Oh, Mareke, every vote that should be cast to cause that this rising is consolidated on the throne of the presidency. Lord, we call those votes. We call those who we cast them. We, we, oh, my God, their steps are ordered. In the name of Jesus, things change on the prayer altar. The people in darkness know you are the one who thinks they are just going from country, from state to state. If you know the rituals that are taking place now, virgins that are being buried, animals that are being slaughtered, you will be shocked. If you know the forests that they are entering, don't be naive people allow western civilization to make them become spiritual illiterates meanwhile even the west was raised by priests those nations were born by priests you become so intelligent and you become a spiritual illiterate let us pray now every force every power every influence that has been released into the atmosphere either to create fear in the hearts of men hear this many will want to vote but they'll be afraid to go out because of the manipulation in the atmosphere many will want to vote but there will be unnecessary procrastination they will want to stand up but they won't stand up until the election time passes there are manipulations in the atmosphere can we arrest those forces every negative spirit talking every demon walking every prince uttering his oracles we call them null and void we cancel the influence the negative influence in the atmosphere all the participants all the electorates they are excited they are bold they are energized and they participate they exercise their franchise in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ameradua Mebula Kaide, Evurana Kamanda, Zuzuna Kaya, Ibala Rwanda Dege, Azibro no Shadina Kava, Ubula Nimataka, Azuate, Apande, Baria, Novalakadua, and Tequila. Oh Lord, we arrest the atmosphere. We diffuse the atmosphere. We deplete the atmosphere of all the demonic weights, of all the demonic manipulations. Father, we decree that your presence, your light, your glory permeates the heavens. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we come again against every springs that has been mobilized in the second heavens to manipulate elections in Nigeria to create violence to create fear Lord we, we, we break their influence by the power of the Holy Ghost let the princes of the heavens arise now and let the battles of the heavens begin and Lord let verdict be passed in the favor of the righteous let the jealousy of God be released for his own and for his agenda oh God the prophecies the utterances the covenants the intercessions of the saints let it tilt the balances in the spirit abrano shadakia eladua penakalo arua vena karia mandala gaba araki badanzo zorono aseke pate aswati da kapara kananoska atai ruate abush so meladua nuaka uruataka esu zakina paragatadia asete ke pato kopo orodododo arua dodododo ibi kapa da tua 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 shadua Oh, 
Ancient covenants. We are lying with ancient prophecies. Oh God, the seasons are altered to the favor of the church by the Spirit of the Lord. Emarano, Pandegayato, Avu Lucala Sunataya. Baroka Tenas. Boldness is welling up in the spirits of men. Maraka. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hear this. Things are happening. Don't just read what is on the news. Read the handwriting of the Spirit. Our hope is not in what the news says. It's the signs of the Spirit. He said, we, we, we see not our signs. When the nation can't see their signs, their heritage is darkened but we see the signs are you not are you not surprised see things are changing their programs are being altered and that's the fourth prayer we'll pray that let them be miscalculation in the camp of the enemy the bible said a house divided against itself cannot stand let us ask that arsenal strategies and spiritual protocols that scatter systems be released into their camp are you not seeing even some of the governors that were not bold to speak before they've started talking Look, we are the 11th hour the darkest part of the night is before the twilight that is the hour we are approaching and so let us decree he said even the council of ahitophel was turned to foolishness let men begin to receive anger bitterness let men become dissatisfied let men suddenly be awoken to the manipulation and let there be confusion in the camps of the enemy let there be confusion in the camps of all these political parties that have nothing to give to nigeria but they just want to loot the money and defraud and and destroy and impoverish this country men that have only appetite and ambition selfish and they don't care what happens to the poor masses they don't care what happens to the agenda of god let us decree that there is crisis among them there's confusion in their midst there's miscalculation in their plan and let the intensity of this mayhem the intensity of this confusion the intensity of this chaos let it come public and create a negative pr a negative propaganda a propaganda that puts them down until everything goes wrong let everything that can go wrong let it go wrong in their camp but the spirit of god some of them are planning to buy votes they will go there and they will say the wrong thing and the people will collect their money and still not vote them some of them are planning violence at the end of the day the people who are going to orchestrate violence they will have accidents and die because it will not work it will not work we alter their plan we intercept their program and we change it and we ask that indignation is turned against them by the spirit of god lord we lift our rod of priesthood we activate our shofar and we prophesy victory to the church and we decree that the enemy will fall like a pack of cards by the spirit of the lord for the horse is ready for the day of battle but victory is the lord's my god and who is it that set a thing and it come to pass when the lord has not commanded it lord we decree that their arrogance we meet with shame we decree that there are evil plans backfire against them and lord we decree that even in this season they are judged for they receive a just recompense for their wickedness of many decades in the name of the lord jesus and lord their appetites of evil their appetites of pleasure lord we diffuse it and we ask that you give them a dry breast in the name of jesus there's disappointment in their camp there's discontent this content and, and contention in their camp in the name of the lord jesus and the confusion grows 
we give life to the confusion we give life to the chaos in the name of the lord jesus ah. thank you father in jesus precious name when we pray this week we have been praying but this week where we intercept programs in the heavens where we intercept protocols where we change possibilities in the heavens see some of them traveled around this nation and released causes they release enchantment that's why there is confusion that's why there is fear but at the 11th hour suddenly things will change because our god is a god of suddenly he said in a twinkle of an eye we shall be changed because suddenly the son of man will descend with the voice of the archangel suddenly he says suddenly they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind there will be suddenly that will scatter their camp things will go wrong for them this week they will give money to you to buy election from among their camp it will be stolen and the ones that make it to the election ground men will collect it and will not vote them they will mobilize dogs to go and kill people as they are driving they will have accidents and die because everything they have planned is cancelled in the name of jesus and as god is wrecking havoc on them the camp of god will be growing did you not read in egypt why there was plague in egypt goshen was flourishing goshen was flourishing because this time around the divide between light and darkness will be made known it will become clear it will become clear and finally let's pray for nigeria this nation will not fall this nation will not disintegrate they have envisaged a bloodbath they have envisaged terror they have they have even planned negative things reruns by election military takeover all forms of chaos we cancel it in the name of jesus this nation will not burn this nation will not be overrun with blood the program the plans of the enemy will not stand pray for peace over nigeria that nigeria will rise like a flower blossoming that the, the corruption and the negative pr over this nation will suddenly change and will be known as the citadel of righteousness go ahead and pray nigeria will not fail there are too many prophecies there are too many covenants god has an agenda with this country we bear on our shoulder the caravan of the gospel of the kingdom for the last day the nation must stand and so we are working altars we strengthen priests we strengthen prophecies we are working covenants ancient covenants of the fathers and we ask that the lord remembers nigeria for good and let the fortunes of god the heritage of god over this nation let it blossom like the cedars of lebanon let the glory of the lord flourish and flow over this nation like the waters of euphrates we decree prosperity and abundance nigeria is great the lord utters it and so shall it be we speak peace and progress. Aya, ekenalo barakani the lava. Shanaki paro, evakarina kalata, averanda zuna kaila. Aya, karabina sonza karavati. Aya, family of Yahweh. I have entered. Oh, the covenant of Yah, Yahweh, ah, standing on the altar of Jerusalem, through Yeshua, who is the word of God, through my Jesus, through his blood, I belong to the family of Yahweh. I am standing on the covenant of Yahweh. I am standing on the altar of Jerusalem. So Yeshua, who is the word of God, through my Jesus, through his blood, I belong, I belong. To the family of Yahweh, ah, I am standing on the covenant of Yahweh.
way I am standing on the altar of Jerusalem through Yeshua who is the word of God through my Jesus through his blood I belong to the family of Yahweh I belong to the altar of the Yahweh I am standing on the altar of Jerusalem through Yeshua who is the word of God through my Jesus through his blood I belong I belong to the family of Yahweh I am standing on the altar of the I am standing on the altar of Jerusalem to Yeshua who is the word of God through my Jesus through his blood hear this we decree that no one will be a victim on account of this election no believer standing on the side of God will be endangered or will be cut off on account of this election. We decree preservation and protection for every child of God. From those who will travel, from those who are going out to vote and even vote in volatile regions. In the north, in the east, in the west, in the south, we decree that they are preserved. Father, we stand against corruption. We stand against manipulation of electoral results or elections result. Everything they try to do, Lord, you will reveal it. And they will be disgraced until that which is just is done. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We rise up as a body and we speak from the priesthood of Christ. Even the very priesthood of the order of Melchizedek that has no beginning and no end. And we say on the strength of the powers of that priesthood, in the name of Jesus, the blood and the spirit, let your will be done over Nigeria. And at the end of the day, when all is said and done, Father, let there be peace. Let there be prosperity. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' precious name. Praise God. You want to give God a big hand? We have created change in the spirit. This is what prayer is about. And as we engage this, our rank and our ranking in the spirit will keep growing. For God to trust us, both as individuals and as a ministry with greater responsibilities. I pray for everyone participating in this service on ground and online. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance over you and give you peace. Your going out and coming in is blessed. And even as Nigeria transits to another phase, you will be a stakeholder. You will be blessed. You will be lifted. In Jesus' name. We are going to have two or three of you.